again. What's, what if we can't establish these implicit connections with bonds? Then what we're doing by similar images or impressions. In other words, people have, they don't have the exact same orientation, they have different experiences, but they have similar ones at least for certain kinds of situations like functions of organic cold. But if they can't do that, they're not going to have a very good base for hope of the many sided certain never changing environment. Okay? So let's look at that. I'll let you read it. Read this chart and I'll comment on it. Now, here's where the danger comes in. Remember, it's the previous assumed interaction of both the external and internal world. Now, let us assume, for whatever reason, in other words, we're fascinated by some new goddamn command and control system or procedure, nothing malicious. And we design it such that it hinders interaction with the external environment. In other words, you have to spend so much time working internal problems, you can't really look out the door. In other words, this implies a focus inward rather than outward. Remember what I said about folding your head back inside himself. In many cases, if people do it to themselves, you don't even have to do it, they do it to themselves. Well, if you think about that, let's bring in some modern science. Or the 19th century. Darwin, pick up the day where the environment selects. It tends to select your behavior, and you're trying to adjust to that. So we're saying, you build your end up, you interact and adapt with the agency of the environment, they select one in or out. Well, if you only work in the internal environment, the environment's selecting your behavior, then it's the internal environment, not the external environment. But it's the external environment you have to deal with. But bureaucracies, what do they deal with? Internal. You know, who's going to be where? Who's going to be in pecking order? Who's going to get the best purpose? It's the nicest office. They're all worried about that all the time. They don't have time to worry about the external world, therefore they're not tuned into it. Okay, then if you look at some things we discussed before, the girdle group, the high burden certain principles in the second law, you cannot, before all that, you cannot determine the character and nature of a system within itself. Proof. Girdle, parsky has been proved many different times. Modern chaos theory brings it out in different ways. Not only that, there's something else that comes out of it. You try to do it. It tends to do so late confusion disorder because in the real world, the environment really does intrude. Now, since you don't understand it, confusion and disorder. So, we apply these ideas from Darwin, the second law, Heisberg, and Girdle, to Clausewitz. That's that statement all together. I'll let you read it. For lack of it, pump up many non profit centers of gravity in everybody's system. What happens? What it does, it restricts interacting not with the system with these surroundings, thereby leading to a focus inward. Bang. Which in turn generates confusion disorder, which indeed triggers direct activity, hence, by definition, magnifies friction or entropy. Good example of that, France, 1940. Well, the Germans went through, they put the French temple was much slower, they thought fell behind. So pretty soon they start, not only that, the French general, in order to protect themselves in history, started issuing ambiguous orders, <coughs> which made the thing come apart even more so. They were, totally, they were totally unaware of what really was going on in a timely fashion. They were out of time with everything was going on. Every time they'd set something else, in the meantime, it already took place. And all we do is just kind of break in our system and put it in place. So if I may just capture one thought, is that in our experiences here, when we go out to the MEB and MEP, the scope and the magnitude of the thing, we're looking inward and we forget about projecting outward or the reality. We talk about that, where the reality of the situation. We're overwhelmed. We're producing it to eat ourselves. Go ahead. Although it doesn't impact on a specific combat operation, I would suggest to you that our after action Okay, and so then here's my point. Any command and control, of course, adherence to look inward, this illusion is integrated. In other words, the system literally comes out. In other words, when the squeeze comes on, it comes apart. In a much larger sense, what I'm saying, without these implicit bonds or connections associated with the system, there can be neither army nor individual initiative within a collective entity. Therefore, no way such an organic whole can stay together and cope. Many sided and certain ever changing environment. And that's why you have to have a many sided implicit proper process because environment is many sided and certain and unbreakable also. And narrow repertoires or narrow focus doesn't allow you to come to grips with that. Or turning around or quickly without implicit connection of one, you tend to pump up our pressure, increase paralysis, and bring about system science. And now I want to talk about this is the point to talk about the nifty nugget and proud spirit. For example, thinking about this, look inward. That's exactly what that did, look inward. 
So they lay out these huge procedures people had to go with. They never worked together before, so they're so busy going by the checklist they can't adapt to the world. Well, then if they try to adapt the world, then they don't know how to work together. They've never done it before, so the whole thing collapsed away in the goddamn sea of anarchy. So what did they do? They developed even more elaborate methods for crowd spirit, and it collapsed away even faster. Try to sophisticate it even more. How many people are here familiar with that? You read the reports. You know what I'm talking about, right? So, here's the insight. <clears throat> Emphasize the implicit. Because if you look at things explicitly, you can only handle so much. Implicit, you can handle many channels in your head. Just think about when you first learned how to drive an automobile. You had to worry about this, worry about this, do it in sequence. After you learn how, it's all fingers pitching. You can talk to people, do anything you want. You don't worry about how far you turn the wheel, whether you shove the steering column, I mean, shove the, uh, the, uh, the shifting device, whatever it might be, manual or automatic, where it's going to be. You can talk to people in the you want to emphasize the implicit. It allows you to deal with many things in a simultaneous sense. Whereas when you do explicit, you're sort of forced to look at things in sequence. It's almost like a left-right brain kind of thing. You know, with the left brain, you tend to look at things in sequence. Right brain, you tend to pull it together, many things together at the same time. One's pattern, one's related to sequential. Step by step, or the other one's overall pattern. So you want to really generate, in order to gain a favorable mismatch in friction time, obviously you are lower, but you have superiority shaping and adapting the circumstances. So how do we do this? Another way of thinking about it. Once again, what I'm trying to emphasize, suppress tendency to develop explicit internal range. If you develop an explicit one, the guy takes so much time going down through that, you can't work the external problem. Then hinder an access external world. Instead, range settings so that leaders and supporters alike are given the opportunity to interact with external world and with each other. And that was in the benefit of the German war games. When they, had to, when they conducted the Kriegsfield war games and that, they would have the commanders there as well as the staff officers. For the weekend, a few years ago, I don't know if they changed or not, they had just the staff officers, the commander would be out in the golf course, and the moment real war starts to get here. In the meantime, the staff officers now don't have the capabilities and limitations of the commander or vice versa. So you don't have an organic hole. And the whole idea of holding those war games, each guy can understand what the other guy is going to do, so they're a cohesive group. So when they have to shift gears, the situation unfolds, the guy that knows how to do it, he's going to win, the other guy is. And that's why in real exercise, the commander should be out in the field too. Observing at the front and the rear, and getting, he's trying to suck that information from a number of things so he can, get, he can get the feel of the organization as well as the feel of the situation. And that way they can make many sided implicit progress. And why? Because they get a, a similar implicit orientation. Now, if the commander is so more likely, will be able to diminish their pressure, reduce their time, and of course, the whole thing cascade. Each thing levers each other. Just cascade work downward for your adversary. You pull that off. How many of you have seen it in exercises? A good example where the Marines did it beautifully was in uh, Grenada, where, where uh, Gray Smith of two companies, he made the Army look like a bunch of goddamn fools. Well, they were all stuck and he'd run all over the island doing as he pleased. Three companies. It was it three companies? I'm sorry, okay. Well, it was company. Why, were you one of the company? Well, you know what happened. The other guys got stuck, you are racing all over. You were confused and disordered. The important thing is the other guy was more confused and disordered. That's where closet's wrong. He's trying to reduce his own confusion. No, don't worry about that. That's why you make night attacks. Guys, what's confusing? As long as it's more confusing for the other guys, it's a damn good night attack. And that's why it's good to train at that. And that's what Terry Allen, infantry general in World War II, understood. They'd give him an operation, we're going to leap off at night, and they were like, bullshit. My guys know how to fight at night. It's confusing. He's, yeah, but the other guys are more confused. That is the name of the game. See, because, you know, you didn't know exactly what you were going to do from one moment to the next. The important thing, he kept things going, the other guy came unraveled. The army said, boy, we're going to dig in there and fight the guy. Well, if you dig in the fight, you got to fight. Remember what Patton said? Don't give me about that crap holding your position. Let the other guy worry about holding his. Hold him by the nose, kick him in the ass. When you get, when you run, even make, give instruction. When you run across somebody, pull some of these guys up, and I want everybody rolling around the son of a bitch. Going deep into his ear. Rear, excuse me, also into his ear. <clears throat> right? Did I say it incorrectly? Sir, it was very confusing, but apparently they were more confused. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the whole point. 
As long as the other guy's more confused, that's the name of the game, right? And that's what we're talking about. Okay, so here's the key idea. It shapes the character of all these things we talked about in the beginning. So the implication is very clear. We want to set our system up that plays to an expand rather than plays down and diminish in quick orientation. You play to an expanded world. So, here's the comment. Without orientation, there's no command control worthy name. In other words, that's what it all hinges upon. That's what command control has got to give you that orientation so you can make the appropriate decision. Okay, what does that mean? And I've already made this point earlier. This observation represents what takes place during the command control. Now the Uru are going through it represents what takes place. Therefore, it means Uru in a sense can be thought of as being the command and control. In the sense that it's not only your personal command and control, but your overall command and control. And not only that, the second L orientation. The posture of genetic area of is the most important part of the world because it shapes the way we observe, decide, the way we act. So, operating inside of the guy, Google means you're also inside of the command and control. That's all. You're totally inside of the command and control. And some people call it the decision loop and say it's the same idea. Sure. So how do we get effective command control? <clears throat> Here's some historical snapshots. The police used to snap off personal reconnaissance. He would send them out, not only get his normal staff thing, get it from the other people, so he'd get information from many channels, so he could put it together and get an overall picture of what's going on. So-called adjutant generals and special staff officers sent out there. I wrote his message directed a few words, a good example. Because the army, this is the German army at that time, the Prussian army, regarded themselves as one family. He only sent a message out with 20 words and directed them, they knew what to do. He said it was a long, detailed report. In fact, he was criticized for it by the Anglo Saxons, by the Americans, and the British. You can't run an army that way. Well, yeah, not the way we did. You can't. The way they did, they could. <clears throat> These were directives, only about 20 words or so. They had that those shared experience. It's like if you're a family, you know your you know your you know your brothers and sisters. You don't have to give them a long explanation. They know you. Tell them one or two words, and you're on your way. British tight control the Battle of Somme. Christ had all these elaborate procedures laid out. Had picks for certain way. The situation changed. The whole thing went out of sync. And of course, the first day they lost over sixty thousand guys, or almost sixty thousand. Well, you know, totally moved. Very tight proceeding. Montgomery, in particular, during World War II, had what we call a plan of recovery. When they report directly back to his headquarters, no intervening. Not only trying to get a sense of the enemy's doing, but watching his own units, too. Friendly then in. Plus, he's getting his normal staff report, getting intelligence reports, getting all the reports, glues that together. It's an awful situation. Many sided implicit cross references. In fact, he called it his household cavalry. He did the same thing. Like you said, you didn't have, have to work too hard because they didn't get that information. The same way. At HF radios, they're out there and they were looking at the enemy, our own people, plus he didn't run just like himself. He called it his household cavalry. Reported directly to him, no intervening. In other words, he's trying to get what? The right orientation. If he's got the right orientation, then he can make the right decisions and right actions. And he's getting the right orientation because he's getting these multiple observations that help give him the right orientation. Many up, one down. Now I did the same thing I did before I ever went across this over in Japan. I was put in charge of the base because the whole thing was coming in blue and had done some other work and they liked my work, so I didn't want to be the base commander because I had no choice. And after a week, I sat down and cried. I couldn't believe they could let something go so turn to shit as much as they did. They've gone through six or seven base commanders in two years. So you only got a few months. 
So I had two good people, one I found out right away with my legal officer. Good in my control. And what I did with them, when I figured out what I had, I said, item one, you don't even leave the base without my personal proof. You can't even leave the base. And two, I want your deputy to run your shop. I want you out there all over the place. These are going to be my, like Napoleon had his special assist. I had him out there and I said, make no notes. All verbal. I want you to talk to the guys, figure what's going on. You start making notes, they're going to clam up. You're not going to get a goddamn thing. And then every evening you're going to come back, we're going to talk what you found out that day. Now, pretty soon I can look like Nostradamus. Now I can ask good questions because I'm getting information. Because the whole set was designed so I was an emperor had no clothes. And we talked about that the other day. That's why I like that old tale. Have you heard of the old tale the emperor has no clothes? He's got no information. So I was sitting up there, this thing's designed so I don't know anything. So I have to redesign it so I can learn something. Now, there's a danger when you do that. The guys said, well, that's spies. I'm going down to the so we got spies on In a sense, it is. However, there's an iron law you apply in that. Under no circumstances which you find out that way will ever be used for disciplinary information. Never. It's an iron rule. Because if you do, you lose the whole benefit. And if you don't observe that iron law, you'll tear your, tear your own organization apart. That's an iron law. If you can't do it, then don't do it. In the meantime, you can you'll lose anyway. How many people are reading all this new stuff in business? All these new things they're coming up with, they're talking about all these interconnecting nets at all levels, looking at one another, go down, top down, it's good companies. Same thing. So you get it, so the people at the top get a feel what's going on at the bottom and vice versa. And that's how you build this organic holdings. In any case, my point in this is very simple. But before I make that point, I want to show you one more. So can I get to one thought real quick? Like we may have an approach is that we're kind of hung up on this commander's critical information requirements. There is a happy medium there. There's a philosophy that you can't overload a commander with information, but the reality of it is there's got to be some kind of filter, too. I go back to the exercise we had, Bob, observing we were able to capture all that information, but it never got to the key people because we were able to roam. Could you have done your job, or could Ray Smith, you guys, have done your job? You didn't understand what the guys below you had to do. You should change so those guys don't bumble into something they shouldn't, otherwise he keeps his nose out of it. Not to command, but just to keep in touch. Okay, any comments? Okay, the key idea here then is very simple. You see our old friend in many sided and puts it across the That's what you're doing. That's, you're doing that all the time. Look at, look at that pyramid from many different sides. So, where does this lead us? <clears throat> what I call the epitome of command and throw it, the post so Let's read it. Shape. The other guys watch what's going on, but they don't involve. You get the controllers and their commander, and then you get, you're going to get contradictory information. The whole thing comes unglued. Make a big distinction. And of course, the implication is quite, quite clear. The commander has to intercede. I mean, he has to interact so that people understand what's going on, so they don't know what his intent is. They're all, they're all playing the game. On the other hand, you don't want to have people controlling things. You want to stay within broad guidance. Okay? Now, some people may be dissatisfied with that. Well, that's not, there's another chart. You can skip the next one, just a different way of saying the same thing. So, let's bring some illumination on it. Let's reflect upon it, because you might object to that. Let's read these statements. Know what command, definition of command is. Know what control is. We're, we're talking about something a little bit different. In this sense, we're speaking of more close to line leadership rather than command and monitoring, but rather than control. 
you're controlling me, you know, you're making these guys perform like automaton. You don't want to do that. You want to get freedom of action within an overall framework so they realize the purpose. In the Air Force, they recognize that. How many, any pilots here by any chance? Well, pilots have seen it where we have this goddamn argument between close control and broadcast control. And the close control, they try to tell exactly what they're doing, it screws it up. So pilots like the broadcast control. Just give me the information, I'll do the job. And that's what we're talking about. Okay, but you take it even further. I said, it's not quite there. I want to take it even further. We're really talking about appreciation. The reason why I'm bringing appreciation is bringing value to it. Note these comments. Why? First of all, appreciation includes recognition of worth of value. Moreover, next, it's difficult to believe you can even have leaders without appreciation. You can't appreciate it. Well, how can it be a leader? You can't. It's not a sufficient condition, but it's a necessary condition. Because you can have appreciation to be a lousy leader, but without it, you won't be a leader. So I'm really saying the other is you can appreciate leadership top up more appropriate and richer means than command and control for shaping. Adapt and service. So raise the point. Where does this lead us? And we'll modify that chart. Now I want to talk this before you start reading it. But know what I got there. Appreciation and leadership. Command is what? Top down and control is top down. Where the hell's the bottom up? Command and control, you have to have both bottom and top down. You can cut the command. Command's top down, control. Uh, that's not surprising everybody was at the top down viewpoint. Appreciation leadership. Appreciation tends to be bottom up, and leadership tends to be what? Top down, based upon that appreciation. So you got to go in both ways. And how can you get appreciation without making a many sided implicit cross reference? There's no way. So now it's organic. And that's when you have a so called design, uh, so called command and control system, it has to permit. Or it has to feed this what I call this appreciation and leadership idea. And if it doesn't feed it, it's a lousy system. If it doesn't permit it to feed that appreciation and leadership, it's a lousy system. So you want to get both top down, I mean bottom up and top down. First command and control is top. Command is top down and control is top down. Okay, you can go ahead and read it. Also, I don't talk about determine. Now I talk about discern. You can't determine what's going on. You sort of discern what's going on. Determine it implies you know more than you know. How do I change that word? Because determine the previous charts. Now I have discern. You determine something, you're implying you know more than you know. Like you in your situation, you know, you were sort of trying to discern what's going on. You really couldn't determine. You all you wanted to be sure you're confused, disordered, like you're trying to roll over. Exactly right. Okay, so then you see, now we just inverted things with the same idea. Except it's more fluid, more loose, more more able to deal with a changing, uncertain situation. Okay? So it kind of leaves a suspicion. Why do I say that? Because command and control represent the top down mentality. Remember, I said command's top down, control's top down. The reason why I use electrical is because we use all these electrical things now for command and control. It depends on stifle the implicit nature because they have to make everything in a standardized format, otherwise, you can't use the system. And I'll give you a lot of examples. Talk to, talk to your commandant. General Gray, about when he was over at Saigon, the evacuation of Saigon, what a disaster that was. They tried to do it through these nice central lights, and they finally had to, bullshit, we're going to do it our own way. They had to turn off the goddamn yeah. machine. They had to turn off the machine. They said, all they do is confuse and everything. Hmm? Well, yet yeah, the Air Force Colonel, who was locked in and didn't have the orientation, said everything was working smoothly. I know it. It was well, bullshit. Sure you know, I talked to General Gray, the guys were there, they all. For sure, that aspect of it, when that's how they got yeah. the argument, the critique or something like that, there was yeah. not. Exactly right. Sometimes you're saying it worked smoothly, but the people that was the people who weren't there. In other words, that's the general in World War One back in the chateau with his dolly and his glass of wine, not even seeing what the hell was going on in the front. Same idea. 
potentially I'm being hard to answer to make it more dramatic if I didn't have a girl up. Or maybe he did, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to make him, he was divorced. Not, the point is they were divorced from what was going on. They were not tied into what was going on. And here they thought they were controlling something, they were controlling nothing. You're like a captain of a ship, you know, he's at the wheel, the wheel's not connected up to the rudder, and the throttles aren't connected to the engine. He thinks he's running a goddamn ship, he's running nothing. That was Weinberger when he was in the defense department. I used to tell him, guys, Weinberger, you got the defense department, he's at the wheel here, and the the wheel's not connected to anything, and the throttle is not connected to anything, and he thinks he's running the defense department. He wasn't running anything. I might add, he's not the only one. He's not the only one. So the resolution of these thoughts in my eyes to me there's a better, really a better title for the presentation. And basically what we've been talking about here is what I call appreciation of leadership. That's what we're really talking about. That's what the organic design is about. You have to have both the bottom up and the top down. So you have to, as a commander, you have to set your system up so you're always testing people. All the time, key changes that keep getting from different different attributes because that's gonna be that gonna give you that finger spits and confusion. And if you give people monopolies and information, when they get in trouble, they're only going to give you what you want to hear. Therefore, the very thing you need, you don't get. And that's why you want these multiple independent channels coming up. It's a cross check. Let's think about like different, people have different perceptions. You know, even the German general staff, remember they said the general staff command channel went up separate from the regular command channel too. And the commanders hated that because they knew this information was going to be different. They complained about it. In the end, they said, yeah, that's right. And like Balt himself, he's. What do you think? Why do you think I went down and talked to the troops? Because I admired their cuisine. Cuisine. He says, No. He says, I tend to learn different things when I talk to them than I got in my headquarters. And it was important that I know that. Okay. So basically, this is what we're talking about. And here's my definitional chart here, where I lifted these definitions out. Look at, look at control, when I really want you to look at there, because it's defined. It means, it means the power of authority to regulate, restrain, or verify, using in some standard. Direct, and it comes from medieval Latin, which actually means checklist mentality, control the checklist mentality, control the tools, which comes out of medieval Latin. Whereas leadership is quite different. So the most important message I'm giving you here, you've got to learn to get information from many different sources so you can get an overall picture of what's going on, so you can get an idea what not only your own organization is doing, but what it can do with the situation you have to face up there. And that's you just it's crucial. And many of our command and control systems, it's the very thing they don't do, which I think is very it's not so good. Any questions? Anybody? So you said I'd show you one wiring diagram. I promise. And see, that's why when I went out, to, in fact, I went out to Miter Corporation, I was responsible for a lot of our command and control. And uh, I said, all oh, you guys are looking at the CME. You know, I did the same thing with them. You're not going to command and control. You call CME. You just command I mean, communications and wiring. It's not command and control. I said. And you don't understand this. How do you know we didn't design the right system? Well, said, we really don't know. So now I know. You've just told me. You're designing systems. You don't know if they're any good or not. I said, that's great. So you really want to test some of these models you're going to use out there and find out which ones seem to be easy. They're easier to work through for the various uh, people who are going to have to use these systems they're designing. So they couldn't tell me what, 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 under what circumstances would tend to hinder the process and what circumstances would tend to help the process. Well, if that's the case, then what kind of a system are you get? A lot of old R and D efforts uh, to go out and That's right. They're just all hard work. I mean, say we have the human engineering uh, aspects of it, but in actuality, it's like, does one system feed another properly? Do we have the proper software that connects the two pieces of hardware? That, that's our main focus. Right. You don't want to let them do that. See, that hardware has to serve the people. 
not the people serve the hardware. And we're letting the people serve the hardware, not the hardware serve the people. We got it fast backwards. That's what I'm trying to say. Pardon? A system that we got rid of. Minus. About a year, uh, maybe two years ago, Nate, the most recent days referred to this. About two years ago, I was asked to do a study of the phenomenon on why this command control system happened to be one of the parts where we're all minus. Uh, failing. 